Well, hello, 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 everybody. And today we're talking about the top five reasons that being an elementary school music teacher is an awesome job. All right, so at this point, I have 10 years of being an elementary school music teacher, and I think I've got a pretty good insight onto why I enjoy the job so much. So I'm gonna be comparing it to other music jobs as well as just other jobs. So here we go. All right, so number one is you get to be really, really creative. You're not confined to just doing one thing or the same thing over and over again. Obviously, you're gonna be seeing different grade levels and you're gonna be seeing different students and you're gonna have different classes, but normally you get to kind of decide what your program is gonna look like. So that means if you're a drummer, you could be doing more ORF percussion. If you're a singer, you could be doing more choral based things. If you're a guitar player like me, you could say, hey, I'm gonna start a ukulele thing. And that really is invigorating to have that sort of experience. And as far as your curriculum, typically you're going to hit those sort of standards anyway if you're singing songs and moving and dancing and learning how to read music. So you're going to hit those and then you get to decide what you want to do on top of that. So number one, being creative, definitely a perk to the job. All right, so number two is you get to see the students over a number of years. So if you think about it, if you're a second grade teacher, you have a student for one year, you make a huge impact on their life and then they move on. Whereas with a music teacher and especially elementary school music teacher, you get to see the kids in kindergarten, they go all the way through fifth grade, you get to sort of grow with them musically. So personally, I like it because I get to build my program because I know that I'm gonna see a student in kindergarten and then I'm gonna see a student in fifth grade. So if I'm teaching a student how to read in first and second grade, they should be able to read in fifth grade. Of course, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes students forget information, but then that also allows me to change my instruction. So I'm making more lasting impacts in that. But yeah, definitely seeing a student for six years, definitely a nice advantage. So number three is the variety. And this definitely goes in with the creativity, but it's a bit different because Every single day is different. Every single class is different. The beginning of the day is different from the end of the day. Every single month and season is different. And that's a huge advantage when you're just trying to not burn out. Number four, the performances. Obviously the performances are a lot of work, but they're a lot of fun after they're finished. And as we were talking before, the flow of the year or the variety honestly has a lot to do with the performances. Last year with the pandemic, we didn't have any performances and I didn't know what month it was. All right, so this is the flow of my year. September comes around, everyone's all fresh, everyone's having a good time. Boom, okay, you're establishing your routines. Great month, easy flow to the month. October, slightly different flow. You have this month where, oh, okay, we're into the routine, but everyone's still sort of fresh, everyone's still sort of new. And if you're an elementary teacher, you may be only seeing the kids once a week. So, hey, it's fifth time I've seen you. We're having a great time. And then November comes around. What's nice about November is you're working on concert music. The kids are excited and you're getting them excited about the concert. They have something that they're working really, really, really hard towards. So at other times when things may not be as exciting, your class is actually extremely exciting. And then once December comes around, the month just kind of plays itself. Obviously you're working on your concert material. Everyone's focused because they know they're gonna have a performance. And it's a really, really good time. And then you get to have a concert at the end and that's always enjoyable. And then my favorite month of the year comes January. And I always tell the kids this and they always think I'm crazy, but January is my favorite month as a music teacher because I get to do something new, something fresh, something fun. It's a great sandbox month where you can basically decide to do anything. If you wanna do a one-off body percussion unit, you could do it. If you wanna do a boom whackers unit, you could do it. If you want to start up your ukulele or do some music theory or, or do some uh, extra rhythm reading, you can do that and you can be really creative. And because you don't have the concert, now all of a sudden you feel like you have this gift of time. February is a little bit more of the same kind of going into that. You may be starting to think about concert music depending on where your students are. A lot of times the uh, music conferences are during this time. February, also good month, kind of an extension of January. So then as March comes around, you have the same exact vibe that you did for the winter concert, right? You're handing out the music, you're getting the kids excited, obviously it depends on when your, your, your spring concert's gonna be. But now we have another really big goal to work towards. April is kind of more of the same. You're, you're kind of uh, starting to really polish stuff up. Typically your spring concert is gonna be the more difficult of your concerts. Uh, you have more time, you're able to uh, have the students learn more. And obviously, just like the winter concert, once May hits, you're really just kind of focused and hyper-focused on a performance. 
So you're focused, the kids are focused, everyone's focused, it's a good time. You get to do the concert, concert's all done. And then assuming that your school goes in through June or basically your end of months, you're either doing something really, really fun or you're doing something relaxing. And then, you know, time to do it all again the next year. And that's my flow to the year. Also, if you're enjoying this video, the best thing you can do to help support the channel would be to give a thumbs up so this way YouTube thinks that people like it. And number five is the natural joy of being around singing. There's probably nothing more rejuvenating than being around singing or singing with a group of people. It's almost a very sort of primal feeling, uh, a sense of community. And honestly, I mean, it's the same reason why uh, movies will use you know, kids' choirs for nostalgic things. And, uh, you know, as, as a parent, I know I'm always pumped to hear uh, my, my own child sing songs, even if it's happy birthday for the 50th time, just because there's something very joyful around it. And whenever you're around something that joyful, it's, you know, hard to not walk around with a smile on your face. And obviously there are more reasons than just those five, but those are just five that I came up with. And they're definitely the ones that I sort of enjoy the most about the job. <laughs> oh, yeah.